The Royal Marines PJFC is changing. So what's the new one and what do I think about it? During the Royal Marines joining process, the first fitness test you will do is the pre-joining fitness test. That's before you go down to Limpson and do your three day course. In the past, in the past kind of two years, it's been the PJFT, which is three rounds or four rounds for officers of 20 burpees, 30 sit-ups, 20 push-ups, and a minute plank. You roll through that three rounds to a timed beat. This was brought in around two years ago, or two and a half years ago, when COVID was a thing, because they needed to assess people virtually from afar. Obviously it worked for that, okay, it was a good way to get around it. However, now that's not an issue, and people can travel to gyms and get assessments in person. So that means the Royal Marines have had, had a change, and they've basically gone back to the old way of doing things, and they do the RMFA now as the assessment, which is, a completely different test and involves a little bit more running uh, and a little bit less of a kind of a circuit nature of things. So the new test is a bleep test, the push-up test, sit-up test and pull-up test all to a timed beat just like you do on the CPC. The pass marks for these I believe is 10.5 on the bleep test, 30 push-ups, 40 sit-ups and 4 pull-ups. So fairly low in my opinion in terms of pass marks, however, this is obviously the first stage in your process before you then go to CPC and the pass marks slightly higher. I personally think this is a move in the right direction though because the test before had zero running in it, so what that meant was people were passing that test or, or certainly looking at that test thinking, okay, I don't need to run so I'm just gonna do that circuit over and over again repeatedly until I get better at it. They were doing that, achieving that pass mark for the circuit going down to Limpson for their CPC where they actually had to run, do some bleep tests, do obviously the endurance course, etc. those kind of bits, and come in and stuck because some of them haven't run a mile before. So what this allows people to do is look at the, the test in front of them, see the bleep test and say, okay, well, I've got to reverse engineer that a little bit and think about some running progressions I need to put into my training before I actually get to Limpson and get found out that I haven't been training properly. Whilst I do think this test is a move in the right direction, I still think it's a little bit dated. The Marines have been doing the push-ups, pull-ups and sit-ups test for as long as I can remember, certainly when I was in and before that. It just seems like they're set in their ways a little bit and I feel like a reinvention should come soon because the ability to do push-ups and sit-ups is pretty much useless when it comes to the actual fish you're going to be doing on bottom field or, or carrying a burger or whatever it may be. It doesn't demonstrate any sort of lower body strength, doesn't really demonstrate any proper core strength, just means you can do sit-ups, which is two different things. Um, and it doesn't mean that you're gonna be robust enough to go through training. Whereas a test that had maybe more of a strength element would potentially illustrate that. So in terms of how to train for this new test then, obviously the old test was pretty self-explanatory. People just generally were doing the circuit more and more and more and getting more confident with it, which is, tends to be what happens. If you've got a workout and you do it repeatedly every week, then you're gonna get better at it. That's no shock. However, the new test is a little different. Obviously, you have to achieve certain pass marks. So you shouldn't really be applying to the Royal Marines or certainly not accepting your fitness, fitness test date if you can't do any of these standards. And they're fairly low anyway, so it shouldn't take you too long to get to that standard if you've got the right training program. But the way I would train for the bleep test specifically is probably eight to 10 weeks of aerobic base building. So you wanna be running a little bit, little bit slower, making sure you're building some time on your feet, building some aerobic efficiency, and then specializing in the last kind of two to four weeks of the program in specific bleep test work. So that means working on your turns, acceleration, deceleration, making sure that you're familiar with the bleep and the timings, etc. so you're not shocked when you get to the, get to the test. I actually have a video which I'll link here that describes how to train for the bleep test which I made a couple of months ago. For the rest of the assessments then, obviously you still need to be doing push-ups, pull-ups and sit-ups. That's not changing, okay? That was what you have to do for the, for the PJFT anyway. However, you'll have to just now look at them as one singular test. So before it was, like I say, the three to four sets of 20 uh, push-ups in, in one go. Now you're gonna have to do 30 to the beat without stopping and no, no rest. So you're gonna have to get used to that bigger set. I do think that's a little easier, to be honest, because you haven't now got to do 60 reps total, you've just got to do one set of 30. However, you need to be training a little bit of muscular endurance. The thing I think people come unstuck with in the push-up test is actually the ability to hold the plank position for long enough. So if we think about 30 reps to the beep is probably about 60 to 90 seconds, 
of actually holding that specific position. If your core isn't strong enough to facilitate that, then you forget about the test. You're not even gonna be able to hold the position. So make sure you can hold a plank, a straight arm plank for a good enough amount of time. And so that means two to two and a half minutes probably. So you're not even thinking about your core when you're going through the test. And then obviously we need to be thinking about push-up strength as well. So the standards for the push-up test are very, very simple. So tucking your elbows in, fingers and thumbs together, head and eyes up, good strong position for the, from the core. And obviously we just keep up with the beep as, as we go through. And like I say, 30 is the minimum, minimum standard. In terms of an actual actionable workout you lot can take away with you then, I would look at something like this. So we're gonna take two minutes as the time period. Every 10 seconds, you're gonna do a rep. Okay, so two minutes, you're gonna hold a straight arm plank. Every 10 seconds, you're gonna do a push up. This obviously gets you used to holding a plank position for an elongated period of time and moving through that range of motion and accruing reps. So you can do it for two minutes, you can do it for three minutes. Obviously, you can compress the amount of time between push ups, so you can do it every five seconds etc play around with it and make sure you're progressing over time okay the next portion of the test then is the sit-up test so again super simple in terms of reps obviously you've just got to do 45 reps to the beep and then you'll be able to on the day hopefully hit that 35 or 40 rep range so you want to be obviously above the test standard before you go down there making sure your knees are staying together throughout the entire test that's something that people fall foul of pretty pretty frequently uh, and making sure that you're training the sit-up test with your feet anchored underneath something. When you come to do the test, both in the uh, PJFA and in the CPC, your feet will be held down by something. So it makes sense to train that way, right? If we're doing our sit-ups without our feet anchored, they're a completely different movement and they target different muscles and different muscles get tired at a quicker rate. So make sure your feet are anchored under a sofa or a treadmill or your mate's holding them down, whatever it is. Your knees are staying together and we're coming up and down through full range of motion for those 35 to 45 reps. Again, in terms of a little drill you can do to increase your sit-up ability, you can go every two minutes and you can pick a actionable, sustainable number of sit-ups you can do. So I would say something like 15 to start with. So 15 sit-ups with good solid form and then you're gonna go into a 30 second hollow hold which I'll put a video of in front of the screen. So you'll do those two in the same two minute window and then four sets, five sets, however many you can manage in the initial phase and then obviously add sets and add reps as you go through your program. A quick one with the sit-ups, again, keeping your knees together is super important. The way we sort of drill that and the way I get my athletes to cue themselves is to hold something in between the, in between the knees because the tired you get and the more fatigued you get throughout the test, the less you're thinking about keeping those knees pinned together. So what I use is a piece of paper. You can use a lifting strap, anything that's super light and super thin to hold your knees together and make sure that throughout the test, they actually stay locked in. Okay then, so the final part of the test will be a pull-up test. Arguably, this is the hardest part, right? Pull-ups are something that people struggle with pretty frequently. Even getting your first pull-up is something that people work for a long, long, long time to achieve. So hitting four of them to a time beat for some people can be really, really difficult. Some people are going to fly through that. So if you're on the first end of the spectrum where it's something that's quite new to you, maybe you've got limited upper body strength, maybe you're quite heavy, okay, so it's difficult to get yourself up to the bar. Then a couple of things you can do and implement into your training is anything that's vertical pulling. So a lap pull down is a great place to start. If we can just, just do that nice and light, get used to the movement, and then increase and increase until you can pretty much lap pull down your body weight for 10 to 12 reps. That's a really good place to be. Once we can do that and we're comfortable in that plane of motion, we can then go onto the bar and hit some banded pull-ups. So again, what we wanna be doing is fighting for perfect technique. So we don't wanna be learning and ingraining bad technique. So making sure that the band we choose is, is nice and supportive. So a super thick band at the start and we hold really, really good form and hold the pull-up at the top, make sure you're going to a dead hang at the bottom, all those kind of things. And over time, again, we can chop away at the band we're using, making sure the resistance is, is coming down and down and down as we get stronger. Uh, and we can add in some different progressions in terms of body weight rows, making sure our pulling strength is there for that, that pull-up test. This is something that's probably gonna take you three to six months, depending on your current ability. So don't be rushing the process, don't be kind of really impatient with it. 
a lot of my clients, it takes them a long, long time to just add two to three reps to their max pull-up score because it's one of those things, it takes a long time. If you're someone with excess body weight, then I advise you lose that because that's just extra kilos you've got to pull up to the bar. It makes it super difficult if you've got excess body weight. So once you're there and you can do your first pull up, maybe you can do a couple, okay, with, with a bit of struggle, then we need to think about actually getting in time with the sound track, in time with the beep. So the sound track, if you've never heard it, it beeps, you hold at the top, it beeps and you go down to the bottom. So it's full range of motion, it's full dead hang, full dead stop, uh, which is really difficult. It requires a lot more strength than just banging them out. So making sure you're comfortable holding at the top of the pull-up bar and making sure your grip strength's strong enough so that we can actually hold, the, hold our body weight for a period of time. Same as the push-up, holding that position. So making sure we're doing loads of dead hands and loads of chin over bar holds to strengthen that top position and strengthen the bottom position. And obviously doing those progressions I mentioned before to strengthen the actual range of motion throughout the pull-up. And there we have it guys. Okay, so new PGFA. It's a, this, like I say, the first fitness test you do on your road to becoming a Royal Marines Commando. So it's now changed, okay, it's, it's altered. If we haven't been doing bleep test work before, now we need to be getting, getting amongst it, okay, and getting out on doing our runs. I know it's winter, I know it's cold, we need to get outside, doing our runs, make sure we're doing bleep test work, make sure we're getting used to it. Um, and obviously the push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, as I've mentioned, we can work on those, okay? And they should be okay anyway, because we had our eyes on the PGFT, which now is null and void. Which, trust me, is as much of a fucking drama for me as it is for you, because I had to go through 80 weeks of programming in my academy, change them all, because it has to stay up to date. Speaking of that, the link in the description will be my academy. So the top link, if you pick, uh, click that, there'll be a seven day free trial on my academy. Again, that takes you through an entire process of training phases. Like I say, it's now 80 weeks deep. So however long you need it for, it'll be there. Uh, and you can obviously follow along until you get to where you need to be. Any questions or comments, bang them down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.